Good morning. Hi. We hope you had a great weekend. We're back here on Monday with another devotion for you. This morning we're going to be singing a song called He is Exalted. And some of you may not know that song, so we're going to practice the words first. I will say them and then the girls will repeat them so you can repeat with them and then we'll sing it together. Okay? So I'll start first and then you guys repeat. It goes like this. He is exalted. The king is exalted on high. He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. Good. I will praise him. I will praise him. He is exalted forever exalted. He is exalted forever exalted. And I will praise his name. And I will praise his name. And the next part goes, He is the Lord. He is the Lord. Forever his truth shall reign. Forever his truth shall reign. Heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. Rejoice in his holy name. Rejoice in his holy name. He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. All right, are you girls ready to sing? I'm going to attempt to play some piano along with us. So sing with the girls. We'll praise him with he is exalted. You guys ready? left off um, with the story of Abraham and Isaac and they had or Abraham and Sarah and they had their son Isaac and remember God had promised them a son even though they were very very old he promised that they were going to have a son and that Abraham's family was going to be so huge that it would be more than the stars in the sky and that everyone on earth would be blessed through their family so when they had Isaac God had started fulfilling those promises for them Today we're going to keep going with a song called, or a story called The Present, and this also has Abraham and Isaac in it. It's from Genesis 22, so if you want to read it when we're done, that's where you can find it in the Bible. God knew that his secret rescue plan could only work if Abraham trusted him completely. God had to make sure Abraham would do whatever he asked. So a few years later... God asked Abraham to give him a present. Abraham liked giving presents to God. He gave God his animals. They were called sacrifices, and they were a way to say, I love you, to God. But this time, God didn't want a lamb or a goat. God wanted Abraham to give him something more, much more. He wanted Abraham to give him his son, his only son, the son he loved, Isaac. Put his boy on the altar and kill him as the sacrifice? How could God want him to do such a terrible thing? Abraham didn't understand, but he knew that God was his father who loved him. And so Abraham trusted him. 
Early the next morning, Abraham and Isaac set off. They climbed the steep, stony trail up the mountain. Isaac carried the wood on his back. His father carried the knife and the coals. Papa, Isaac said, we have everything except we forgot the lamb for the sacrifice. God will give us the lamb, son, Abraham said. They built an altar and laid the wood on top. Abraham asked his son to climb on top of the wood. Isaac didn't understand, but he knew his father loved him, and so he trusted him. He climbed up onto the altar, and Abraham tied his boy to the wood. Isaac didn't struggle or try to run away. He just lay there quietly and didn't make a sound. Everything was ready. Abraham took the knife. Tears were filling up his eyes. Pain was filling up his heart. His hand was shaking. He lifted the knife high into the air. Stop, God said. Don't hurt the boy. I want him to live and not die. I know now that you love me because you would have given me your only son. Abraham felt his heart leap with joy. He unbound Isaac and folded him in his arms. Great sobs shook the old man's whole body. Scalding tears filled his eyes, and for a long time, they stayed there like that, in each other's arms, the boy and his dad. Suddenly, Abraham saw a ram caught in some branches, the sacrifice. God had given them what they needed just in time. The ram would die, so Isaac didn't have to. And so Abraham sacrificed the ram instead of his son. And as they sat there on the mountaintop, watching the embers of the fire die in the cool night air, the stars above them sparkling in the velvet sky, God helped Abraham and Isaac understand something. God wanted his people to live, not die. God wanted to rescue his people, not punish them, but they must trust him. One day, someone will be born into your family, God promised them, and he will bring happiness to the whole world. God was getting ready to give the whole world a wonderful present. It would be God's way to tell his people, I love you. Many years later, another son would climb another hill, carrying wood on his back. Like Isaac, he would trust his father and do what his father asked. He wouldn't struggle or run away. Who was he? God's son his only son, the son he loved, the Lamb of God. Two questions with our story today. Remember, you are always welcome to pause these and talk about the questions before I talk through the answers. Number one, why did God ask Abraham to sacrifice Isaac? And number two, who did sacrifice his only son to save us? God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son. It was, uh, we call it, it was testing his faith. It was seeing how much Abraham trusted God, that God would carry out his promises. Remember, Isaac was his only son and his family was supposed to be so big. Did Abraham trust that God could still make that happen, even if he gave him a son? And uh, Abraham sacrificing Isaac would show God that he loved him more than anything else in the whole world. And he was ready to do it. He had that knife all ready, and God stopped him. God didn't want him to kill Isaac. God was seeing how much Abraham trusted him, how much he loved him. But there was a father, there is a father, who did sacrifice his one and only son that he loved to save us. And that is God the Father. Jesus is his son, and he sent his son Jesus down to earth. He sent him on the cross, and he had Jesus killed. He, Jesus died to save us from our sins. Last week we were doing prayers um, thanking God for the many blessings that he gives us in our life. This week we're going to focus on a, a prayer where we tell God, uh, in our house we call it God, you're awesome prayers. There are so many things about God that make him so much greater than us and recognizing those and praising him for them is a great way to understand God, to know him better. So this week we're going to start some God, you're awesome prayers. So if you'll fold your hands with me, we'll say our first God, you're awesome prayer. 
God, you are awesome because you are omniscient. And omniscient is a big word that means you know all things. God, there is nothing that you do not understand. Please help us to remember your perfect knowledge when we don't always understand what's going on. We can trust that you have it under control. Amen.